now after uh, 12 days away with their national teams, many of them, uh, the Premier League resumed at the weekend. Players are being asked to do uh, almost impossible things and it is showing uh, in the injuries. They're up around 40% more, particularly soft tissue injuries, which are, of course, uh, calves, hamstrings, uh, the result really of playing too much and not being able to do it. Uh, there's only a, a certain amount any footballer or any athlete can do. But we're going to talk about uh, the Premier League now um, with John Giles. John, uh, just uh, from your own experience, playing in the top side year after year uh, at Leeds, there's only so much you can do. And these lads have been asked, I think, to play even many more games than a, you know, a great Leeds side had to play being in all the competitions. This is really, really too much they're asking. Yeah. Don't, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, definitely. But, well, well, in, in, in my day, I mean, they used to, well, Shank used to say, if you play the same players all the time, you're be the best chance to win the league. Very, very small panels in those. They played a lot of matches, sometimes yeah. too many matches, but not like now, especially this particular, over this particular year. Yes. I mean, where we've had this virus, we have to uh, uh, crush in fixtures at the end of last season yeah. and then start within three weeks on the new season. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just too much. Uh, and now, obviously, you say players are only human. They're supposed to be very fit, which they are. Uh, people say, well, they should be able to take in all these matches. But when you play as many matches as they have done yeah. over a short period of time, you're bound to get the entries. Yeah, and a 12-day international break, which included uh, one, one friendly match. The last yeah. thing these players need is a friendly match because no match is really that friendly. Well, they shouldn't even... Have, this Nations Cup thing, I mean, that they shouldn't introduced only yeah. last year yeah. shouldn't be played. Yeah. That should have been cancelled straight away. Yeah. That's just a money maker in between yeah. the, the, the World Cup and the European Championships. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, the players shouldn't be asked to play in that. That should have been cancelled straight away. OK, let's get to the football, John. Uh, and I want to go to Spurs to start with. One of one or two uh, of our listeners um, mailed complaining about uh, the Tottenham-Manchester United game. Tottenham went to Old Trafford 1-6-1 and we spent all our time, and it's my fault, <laughs> talking about how bad Manchester United were without mentioning how brilliant Spurs were on the day. Uh, and that's worth apologising for in the first instance. Uh, but it's also worth recording. Um, Mourinho has got something going at Spurs. They're top of the league, along with Liverpool at the moment. And they beat Manchester City uh, on Saturday. Although I have to say, John, I don't know what you think. Um, I saw uh, Alan Shearer, or, or Ian Wright, I think it was, describe Tottenham's win as a tactical masterclass. This is because they scored in the first minute. They defended for 90 minutes and then they scored, they scored another goal. It was nevertheless a significant win for Mourinho and a couple of performances we talked about uh, when we were watching the game. Harry Kane and Son in particular. Kane, you've always liked as a player, but we, I think we both, are, I certainly thought he went off the boil in the last 12 months or so. But Mourinho's dropped him back into a midfield uh, kind of role where he, uh, it's hard to mark. And he really is now, I think you said to me on Saturday, the complete player. Yeah, he's, he's, I, I, think what, I don't think he's dropped that deep, Eamon. I, I think he's dropped deeper and obviously got involved in the game in a deeper position. Yeah. It would be a bit like Kenny Dalglish playing for Liverpool, yes. Eamon, who was a striker but, but obviously had... The, the the positional sense to drop back at the right time, become involved in the game, and still score goals. Because yes. if you come a bit deeper, in, in Kane's case and in Dalglish's case, it's very, very difficult to be marked. Yeah. And then when you do get the ball and release it, you're coming from behind the ball, so you can pick yeah. up positions. I don't want to get too te technical here, I mean, but that's what he's doing. But obviously, he has to have the positional sense to do it, yeah. and the skill to do it. Which, which that's what he's improved on, really, in the last year, yes. particularly, and, and recently. His positional sense and his distribution of the ball. So he's making as many goals, nearly as many goals, as he's scored in himself. Yeah. And he has the right man beside him and son who's making the runs. Yeah. So he's very, very difficult to mark, and he, and he can do it now. 
probably maybe two, three years ago, four years ago, he didn't have the technical ability to do it, Eamon. No. Probably not. But now that he has the positional sense and he's, he's made himself a much better player, there's no doubt about that. And he was very good anyway. Yes. And the the game on Saturday, I mean, people have wondered about what's happening in Manchester City. My own feeling, John, is that the intensity they had to win the ball back, that pressure they'd put on the opposition that was relentless at their best, they've lost. I didn't see any pressure on the ball when Tottenham had it, to be honest. Um, well, I thought they did in the early part of the game, and before you know, after after Tottenham scored. But the, the fact is, I mean, they just don't have the players they had. No, they don't. That's right. David Silva, Aguero injured, uh, a lot of Vincent Company, people yeah. of that stature. Yeah, you know, when, when you have those players, they're, they're the great players and they do it. They, they haven't replaced those players. No. And that's four or five players that they have. Ferrandinho, they don't have. Yeah, Sane is so, another very good player. They let go back to Bayern Munich. Uh, he wanted to go, I think. But he was, a, he was a very good option on the left. Yeah, well, he insisted on going. So yeah. that's another player. That's, that's five players in the, in the team. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult. It, they can be replaced. But it's very, very difficult to do so. Yeah. I mean, that's how teams come and go. And, yeah. You know, because the, the older players, or the, the players that they had, great, the, the great Liverpool team, the pass was to Ness and yeah. Hansen and Dalglish, you know, had their time. They were absolutely brilliant. But it's very difficult to replace them. And I think that's the position that Manchester City had in. Yeah. And the other teams have. You know, Liverpool have come on. Chelsea are coming on now. Spurs have come on. Uh, and and, and, and can, can, can really play against them now, whereas in the, in the previous last two, three years, uh, when they lost those players, they just can't do it. No, I think he's bought badly, John. I, I'm not a bad def- ordinary defender. Diaz paid £65 million to Benfica for him. Uh, he was, uh, along with the left-back who wasn't on the cover, uh, he was culpable on Saturday. And they don't really have, uh, they haven't really bought the best very best players and uh, there's plenty of examples of that um, for example uh, Rodri in the midfield um, and Gundogan who's not a player you love but he's been there a long time now uh, and there doesn't appear to be any uh, I, I I want to ask you about the uh, winning the ball back it was an essential part of the Guardiola philosophy at Barcelona, at Munich as well, and when he first came to Manchester City, they used to say in training, you had to a drill where you had to win the ball back within five seconds. That intensity to win the ball back, I did not see on Saturday. Yeah, but, but they haven't got the players to do it, Eamon. No, but, well, anyone can, anyone can work hard to get the ball back, John. I know, well, no, no, that's not, well, they, 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 not really. I mean, you have players who do it specially and... and are, are terrific players as well. Uh, you know, Rodri doesn't win the ball back, for example. Yeah, in no, the middle it, of the field. You know, they, 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 there's a few there who don't don't get. You say Gundogan. Yeah. Uh, you know, these these are players that are replacing uh, Silva and Ferrandinho and the, the company and these great yes. players. I mean, so it's a, it's not a, it, it, it's an art in the game to win the ball back as well. It's not everybody that can do it and do it extremely well. Manchester City, what made them great was they had the players who could really play, like David Silva and those players, yes. and could win it back. Yep. And could win it back. Right. That's what, well, makes, that's what makes the great players. Okay. Now, this Spurs team, John, he's bought some players, uh, the left back, Regulon. Uh, he's bought a good, a good forward, a Bergwin. And, of course, he has Son. Son has been around a long time, John. He's really been an underestimated player, hasn't he? He he really is a marvellous player. Gives yeah. everything, and if he gets the chance, he takes it invariably. He's been brilliant, Damon. His yeah. attitude is great. Uh, and, and I think with Harry Kane scoring the goals that he has done over the years, yes, uh, has been the star man. You know, he gets yeah. more publicity than anybody else. And, and also, I mean... Kane plays for England. Yes. Now, I'm not blaming Harry Kane on this. I'm just talking about the, the publicity that he gets and deserves. Where Son it plays for, for, for who does he play for? North Korea is it? South, South Korea. South, South Korea. He wouldn't be. If he's playing for North <laughs> he Korea. He'd be playing for North Korea. <laughs> no, South, <laughs> okay. South, South Korea. 
Yeah, but we don't see him on the international stage. No. You know, no. And, and, and I'm only talking about the publicity side of it. Yeah. And obviously the publicity side boosts the players up. And Harry Kane and any of the lads who are English-born, they're playing for England, then they're going to get the, 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 main, the main headlines. And, yeah. and Kane deserves them as well. So uh, Son has been like second to Kane all the time. Yes. Uh, but invaluable. I mean, he's yeah. brilliant. He makes the runs. Kane is, is making goals for him now. But yeah. he's the one that's making the runs through the defence and finishing them well. And his attitude is great. Do you see Spurs being there at the death uh, in this championship race? And we're only 12 games in, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, or even not. I think we've only nine games played. So, uh, But he has built at least something, hasn't he? Well, he has, Eamon. You know what it's like in football. A few defeats under the worst in the world, a couple yeah. of wins and the best in the world. Yeah. And that and that's what's happening now. I think he, I, when you go back to Pochettino being there, then, he yes. was doing that. Yes. Yeah. You know, he was finishing fourth in the league. He was calling yeah. every year. Yeah. I mean he got it and, and he wasn't he wasn't spending any money. No. I mean, they have spent a few quid now. Yeah. So you know, Mourinho has done what he's done over the years, I mean, and he's been he's been a brilliant manager. Whether he's improved them or not remains to be seen. Yeah. Because Pontecino, I think, without spending any money, was doing a great job and very, very badly treated, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so, I think Mourinho has has improved him from the time uh, that he took over the club because Pontecino wasn't having a good time at that particular part of the season. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I don't think he's near Liverpool. I don't think he, he, I no. don't think he'll finish within ten points of Liverpool. I mean, yeah. To be quite honest, and we'll come to Liverpool. I just want to ask you about Saturday. I mean, I wouldn't call it. Uh, a tactical masterclass. I'd say they got the goal. I think three minutes in or something, and then they sat back. And really, City <laughs> were. It was like attack versus defense in the training exercise. Yeah. Uh, City just didn't have the quality to finish them off. Um, no, they, no, you know, they defended well. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. You know, they got the goal and they defended well. But you know, to, to to the winner, the spoils, I mean, You know, mm-hmm. you know what football's like in the papers. You know, the fellow wins a couple of matches. He's a genius. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, I thought the the, the the decision against the Asus or the handball was a bad decision. You know, uh, I yeah, thought, he handled it, John. Did he? Well, I, mean, I, I well, I can only see what I see on, yeah. on the replay. No, he did handle and it. And he thought his hand was behind his back. But no. anyway, but in, in Mourinho's case, Mourinho has always defended well, Eamon. Yeah, and he's 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 he's, he's always been criticised being a defensive manager. Yeah, you know, and he scored a lot of goals as well, which he had a lot of great players at Chelsea. Yeah, and and other clubs that he had. So he is he he, he, he does organise them well defensively, and he did. Now at that stage in the back, we were talking during the match, the eleven players in their own penalty area. Did yeah, yeah. and it, it looked it looked a bit crazy, and and obviously City couldn't take take advantage of that. But once you win a match, I mean, this is it's 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 been since football began. Fellow who wins the match is a genius. Yeah. Next week he's a bum, you know, <laughs> because he got his tactics all wrong. That's the way it is. But looking at them now, with the, with the season that's in it, I mean, yeah. with, with Liverpool not running away with it like they did last year, and you have Chelsea coming on now, yes. you have, uh, you know, it happens. Uh, you know, Leicester were on top of the table yeah, if before, they won, before if they the, won. For the weekend, and, yeah, and, and, they and they're night. not in the same class. Uh, not in the same class. Now they've done. Brennan has done a good job there. Yeah, but they're not in the same class as title contenders, no, in my no, opinion. No. no. So, no. so Spurs will be there or thereabouts. Chelsea will be there or thereabouts. Yeah. Okay. Manchester City will be there or thereabouts. Well, you're t- you're ticking them off now. None of them will catch Liverpool, in my opinion. No, and I I want to go to Liverpool. Although the way you were ticking them off, I was going to go straight to Manchester United. Who we both saw. Liverpool last night, John. Um, how impressed were you? I was very impressed. I mean, I thought they were very good. Yeah. Uh, I thought they had the young kids coming into the game, but their attitude was good. There's no Salah. Yeah. And uh, they, they bought they bought this lad from 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 Wolves, Yotta. Yeah. Yeah. Yotta. Yeah. It was terrific. I mean, the goals he scored so far. Yeah. Uh, they didn't even miss Salah. And 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 the, and the the big players have 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 been injured or come yeah. into, into yeah. the team. Well, yesterday, so, Thiago, Henderson, Salah, yeah. very 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 big players indeed. Yeah. And of course, Van Dijk uh, at the back, Gomez. Joe Gomez at the back, yeah. and Trent Alexander Arnold. Yeah. So it just shows you how the strength of the squad that he has built up there, Jurgen Klopp. And 
I, I mean, the tempo and attitude last night was superb. Yeah, it's what you would expect, Damon, from them. In, yeah. in, I'm talking about attitude, and that's that's what makes the great teams. Mm. And obviously, whoever comes in is going to have that attitude. I, yeah. I think it, I think it also showed Leicester, Damon, as you know, the top of the table. Yeah. Uh, as obviously, it, it's it's good for Brendan, but they're nowhere near. No. In my opinion, I don't think Leicester are anywhere near even Spurs. No, Arsenal. You know they, these big teams. I just don't think so. But uh, yeah. Liverpool. I think Liverpool has to get the players better, and the other teams have improved. Chelsea have improved. Spurs have improved. Yes. City have dropped down. So I, I think it, it leaves a way clear for. They still have to do with Liverpool, obviously. Yeah. But I can't see any of them catching Liverpool. No. Let's talk about Chelsea, John. Um, yeah. Frank Lampard went to Newcastle one, um, and people said, "Well, it's only Newcastle." But Newcastle can be stubborn opponents, um, and you know, it, it, I don't take anything away from Chelsea. It could have been a lot more. One of the players that really uh, looks like he'll be a great buy is uh, Timo Werner, the German uh, striker. Yeah. He's a great finisher, and he showed a burst of pace uh, on Saturday for the second goal. He, he, he was unselfish and laid the ball off uh, for the second goal, which Tammy Abraham scored. But he looks like a real quality player and he doesn't need two chances to score. No, well, he's getting used to it, Eamon. Yeah. But I think the big thing from Chelsea is now they're not conceding the goals that they've conceding. Yeah. You know, they have. I think the last four matches they've kept a clean sheet. Yeah, well, he signed Thiago Silva, mm. uh, which was a very, very big move. Uh, and now he uh, wasn't fit to play at the weekend. He also signed Ben Chilwell. From Leicester. Now, yeah. Chilwell's a very, very good player. The left back. Yeah, Chilwell's a top player. I mean, you know, he's definitely the best left back in the in the Premiership. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but definitely tightening up at the back is to me. No matter how good you are, Eamon, as we know, but yeah. and he, he was losing. But I think Frank Lampard has done a terrific job. He spent yeah. a few quid. Uh, I think he's got a good a good panel yes. now. And he, he I think it, he, he could well be the, 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 the next in line yes. to yeah. Liverpool. Yes. That's the way. That's the way I would see it so far. Right. I think it's been good, and and I think they can get better. Now, Manchester United, John, they've yeah. had more penalties than anyone else, <laughs> uh, and uh, the VAR. I mean, it, if we start talking about VAR, we won't get much else done, John. Almost every yeah. game we watch now, we're seeing, um, yeah. we're seeing strange things happen yeah. and inconsistencies that are unbelievable. Uh, West Brom. Your old club where you managed um, uh, for a while, I thought they were very unlucky. I thought they sh- maybe should have had a penalty. I just couldn't make my mind up yeah. when Fernandez made that tackle. I'd be interested. Yeah. Did you think that was a penalty? Yes, I think in, in today, Eamon, he, 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 I mean, he went to the VAR situation himself, yeah. apparently. Yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I know you don't, we don't want to talk about VAR. But it was a, it was a, it was a decision that he gave and then changed his mind yeah. on it. You know, we've seen penalties given for less. Oh, absolutely. Let's put it yeah. I mean, everything, yeah. every break, <laughs> there's no doubt, every break that was gone went Manchester United's way. Yeah. That and break went the, the way, the penalty decision, again, the fellow had a hand behind his back. Yeah. Uh, it, it retake it. Well, I wouldn't be go on about to retake the penalty because the goalkeeper definitely left the line. I mean, that's, the, that's part of the rules. I know you don't agree with the rule. Well, I don't what agree I, with the rule. What I want to ask you is, I... He did leave his. He did step forward from his line. Yeah. I don't think that. I think the person taking the penalty has enough advantage as things stand. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I feel keepers, uh, as long as they don't encroach before the kick is taken. But I think once the he's running up to take the kick, I think the the keeper. If you make him keep his two feet on the line, he's got no chance there. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very di- difficult one. Well, first of all, um, just to finish on Manchester United, yeah. everything went their way. They weren't good. I didn't no. think they were good. They weren't impressive in the, in the match at all. No. I think West Brom has the other. got some skillful players, West Brom, but they're a bit fragile, Eamon. Yeah. But as far as Manchester United are concerned, I don't think it was a good performance and everything went their way. Okay, now, on the goalkeeping situation, Eamon, I was yeah. just thinking about it this morning. I, I agree with you that the penalty taker has all the advantages. But I'll just ask you a simple question, because right? I couldn't make it out in my head this morning. Right. When can you let the goalkeeper come forward? Well, I think the way it used to be, when you were you were a penalty taker for Leeds for quite a long time, yeah. 
uh, I think there wasn't a problem there. Did it didn't need to be fixed? I mean, I, I think. Oh, no, but but in my day, I mean, in your day, yeah. the goalkeeper was not supposed to move before the kick was taken. Was that the same mm. rule? Yeah, he wasn't allowed to move off the line. Yeah, he wasn't allowed to leave, move off the line. Oh, that's right. You couldn't dance up and down, could you? And do stuff like that. Well, they, no, but they couldn't actually move off the line. Right. Well, but I think they should be. No, but there was no VAR in those days, Eamon. Right. Yeah. And they, it was a kind of blind eye rule, wasn't it? It was a blind eye rule. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Now, if, if you introduce it now, uh, if you introduce it now, yeah. right? When can he, if you, it's okay. very complicated in many ways. Yeah, no, no, you're the right. fellas running up to the ball, right, to yeah. take the penalty, can he move off his line? Well, I would have him do whatever he wants because I, I think the guy taking the penalty has so much going for him. No, 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 I know that, Eamon, but hang on. Yeah. If you say he can do what he wants. Yeah. Right? When the fellas running up. Yeah. He could run four yards off the line. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll have to I'm not think. trying to be clever. I'm not trying no, to be clever, you know. but but it, it, like the rule, the rule in our day, I mean, he wasn't allowed to move off off the line. But, but it was then never, they, it was they never enforced. The rule that he could move sideways on the line. Yes, right. Yeah, but the, the rule always was you couldn't move, you couldn't move forward. But nobody could tell him those. Occasionally, the referee, because it was the referee or the linesman, mostly the referee, had to make the decision. But well, how can he look everywhere, Eamon? Do you know what I mean? Right. Yes. And, and, and occasionally, occasionally, they used to say, you, you retake the penalty. Occasionally. Yeah. yeah. Now, okay. Um, now, to your favourite subject, Leeds United and their brilliant new manager, Marcelo uh, yeah. Bielsa, uh, Arsenal. Nil-nil. Yeah. First of all, we should say that uh, the Arsenal player, Pepe, who was sent off for a headbutt, um, yeah. He he's, he looks like he's very expensive. Seventy two million he cost John. He looks yeah. like a bit of a waste of space week in week out. Um, there were mixed views. I thought he did uh, put the loaf on your man, as they say in in Dublin. Alioski was his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Alioski. Yeah, but I thought I thought yeah. he deserved to walk. Other people felt um, Patrice Evra, uh, who was doing a bit of analysis for Sky. He thought Alioski should have got an Oscar. But um, what about the match in general? And, yeah. and, and the Sorry, job... who said that, Eamon? Who said that the, uh, he should have got Patrice, an Oscar? Patrice Evra. Oh, well, yeah, well, I wouldn't He's be. not one of your favourite analysts, I know that. No, He's no. Shit. Uh, yeah. I, I, I thought Alioski made the most of it, Eamon. Right. But, but it was a stupid thing to do. Yeah. What about Leeds, John? Uh, well, well, they're very impressive, Eamon, in certain situations. Yeah, I mean their attitude of going forward and being 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 uh, on the front foot, as they say. Yeah, uh, and regardless of the opposition, they're going to play, and this is what they're going to do. And in, and lots of cases, they were, they were very impressive the way they played. Yes. what they they need obviously is is a, is a goal scorer and yeah. to, to finish off all the good work. Yes. I mean, they hit the woodwork three times in the match. Bamford yeah. hit it with a header, but they don't have a, a really, in my opinion, a top class finisher. Or two finishers. Yes. But the yeah. general play. Yeah, it's very bright. It's very good. It's yeah. very impressive. Uh, and I think I said, we said before in your program, and well, I said before in the program, Amy, is that a type of team that win matches that they shouldn't win and they lose matches they shouldn't lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not yeah. going to be consistent in the way that they play. I think that his attitude and his approach is very impressive. And I thought they outplayed, totally outplayed the national team. The other day, even before they were down to uh, yes. ten men, yeah, Arsenal had a few players missing, John. But uh, mm. and Arteta generally has, uh, we I think done a very good job there. Yes, but yeah. players like the uh, party, the player they signed from uh, midfield player signed from Atletico, is a really really good player. He wasn't available to them yesterday again uh, to do with uh, international commitments and stuff. Just. Um, uh, one other thing, John, a player that we both like who really got a raw deal at the weekend, Lamptey. He's the little right oh, back yeah. for yeah. Brighton. He's a brilliant, yeah. brilliant player. They got a great result and they're a good team, John, aren't they? They beat Aston Villa. They kind of yeah. deserve to beat Villa. And I've seen them, we've seen them a lot this season uh, and they've played so well and got so little in terms of rewards. 
against big clubs. But this coach has done a good job there, I think. And this fella, Party, is a magical right back. And he's only a teenager. And he was sent off by Michael Oliver. It was quite disgraceful for two yellow cards. He didn't deserve either of the yellow cards. And he ended up having an early bath. He's a wonderful player, isn't he? Ah, he's terrific, Eamon. And then getting back to Potter, the great yeah. Potter, he's done a big job he has, against... Yeah. I thought he deserved to win it, and There was a contro- yeah. controversial finish. Yeah. Uh, I thought he deserved They were very, very good. He's got some good players in him. The, 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 anywhere he plays, uh, you know, he's, have, he's gone on, on yeah. attacking when he gets a chance to do so. Yeah. He's very good. And, and uh, you know, I thought he deserved to be Villa over the 90 minutes. I, I did. I agree with you. I, yeah. The other thing that it's worth um, marking is a goal for Danny Welbeck and a very well taken yeah. goal. Now, yeah. he's a player I've always liked at, and at Arsenal, wherever he's been, he has the whole package, but he's... I can't hardly remember him ever scoring a goal before that goal. And he's been around. It's not true effort. He's just been an unlucky lad. And sometimes your career can go that way, can't it? You know, he, yeah. he's yeah. a good-hearted I, 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 lad. I well... Yeah, we don't know what he's like, Emma. We don't know what his attitude is like. He's don't know what he's. I mean, he's got a lot of ability. There's no doubt, no yeah. doubt about that. Uh, and he, he looks like a lad to me who should have made more of it than he did. Yes. And maybe now, when he, I think he's thirty now. Yes. You know, you know what lads are like. He gets to thirty, and think, well, geez, I've wasted. It. I've got another chance now. Yeah. And I think that's what the the manager is 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 working on. Yeah. Uh, because he had always had the ability, but he, he disappeared for ages. Emma. He did a lot of injuries, um, yeah. and then. He, he he missed chances that, you know, he would be in the right place and somehow almost trying too hard. But it was yeah. nice it was nice to see him score a super a super goal. Just want to ask you a, a final question, John, really. Um uh, the Liverpool team at the moment, with the strength in depth, uh, and so many players who can score goals and hurt you, they really now um need to get on a roll in Europe and there's European football this week they need to win trophies you're part of a great team at Leeds and I'm thinking of this Liverpool team and my mind in the same terms I thought about Alex Ferguson's best Manchester United teams and uh, Arsene Wenger's best Arsenal team in that era when United and Arsenal were at each other uh, and it was fierce competition I think this Liverpool team is up there with those two teams, but they have to deliver now and win trophies. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. I mean, he's, he's, he's built the foundation to go on yes. and do it. And and then, then you see what, what happens then, is, as somebody said about the politicians, circum, circumstances, dear boy, yeah. or whatever. You don't, you, e- it, events. It, it was Harold, events, Mike, it was Harold you know, McMillan. Like, yeah, injuries or whatever it might, players or stop other clubs coming in to snap. To, you don't know. Yeah. But they've definitely built the foundation to do what these great teams have done. There's no doubt about that. No. And, uh, it, 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 uh, there's no reason why not, Eamon. They kept you get yes. terrible bad injuries or terrible yeah. bad luck or players want to leave. Or I can't see that. I can't see that happening. No. But there's always a possibility okay. on it. Now, just, John, just to finish, just to finish on the Brighton thing, like you call yeah. that, that Lamptey, isn't Lamptey, that his name? Yes. Lamptey. Oh yeah, he's superb. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the most one of the most honest players I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, Damon. Yeah. He's like a kid that goes out and enjoys playing. Yeah, and he's lightning quick. He's great feet. He's great. And he's, he's a, a terrific lad. <laughs> but to have him sent off, I mean, to get yeah. a red card was it, just absolutely outrageous. It was really, yeah. really, 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 yeah. really questionable decision. Yeah. That Michael Oliver is a bit of a showman, the referee. Anyway. Let's finish up on Ireland, John. Yeah. Three games, and uh, I wonder just in general what you think about Stephen Kenny and how he's going. Um, I should point out there's a context here. Mick McCarthy, I think, went eight games without a win, uh, and he did an okay job, qualified for Ireland for the Ireland for the World Cup, uh, and also Michael O'Neill. With Northern Ireland, it took him 10 games to break his dog. Now, Stephen has been under a bit of pressure, but for the game, uh, the, he, the last game here last Wednesday against Bulgaria, he was 14 players down That's through right, injury yeah. and COVID and stuff. Um, yeah. What do you think of, the, of, of what you've seen? Well, it's very hard to judge him, Eamon. As you said, there's 14 players missing from last week. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, England match, it, 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 you know, we didn't get off to a, 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 much of a start. No. And I, I, like, the, the, the jury has to be still out on him and what, what he's had to do with what he's done yeah. uh, with, with the players that he has. And, yeah. You know, I thought there was, uh, in, in a couple of the matches, we were playing better than we had played in the previous matches. Yes. Without having the goals, a real, real goal scorer to take advantage of the good play that yes. we had. But it was very mixed. It was it was crowded. It, there was players missing. We had the virus situation. Yeah. There was all sorts of things there that hadn't happened to previous managers. Yes. So I I would I, the the only good thing I'd say is that he has had eight matches, Eamon. Yeah. That he can look back on. You know, he'll have videos of all those games. Yes. It won't be a waste of time. No, 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 he, absolutely not. I mean, I'm. I'm not. Well, obviously, I, I'm wrong to say yeah. that. It would, but to, it will be able to look back and learn even from what he what he had in the matches that we played because yes. he's tried different players. He's seen a lot of players, and you do learn something from it. You know, they haven't been a waste of time from Stephen's point of view. No, no, but uh, he still needs time to do it. Yeah, and I mean, even I watching uh, the Manchester United game, Callum Robinson came on for West Brom, uh, yeah. and beautiful, beautiful shot. He came on as a sub and hit the, hit the crossbar. Um, he's a player Stephen didn't have available to him. Um, and I think, actually, I can see exactly what he's trying to do. Um, he's not afraid to play young lads. He brought in a lad, Justin Knight, last week. He's only brought him in from the under-21s. He's playing for Derby, I think he's 19. Adam Ida, who's only 19. Uh, and, of course, Connolly, Aaron Connolly hasn't been about... But what he's trying to do is get the players to go out and not be afraid to play ball, not mm. be afraid to pass it. And all the players have, that he's brought in, I feel there's no, there's no look of fear in the Irish team. Everyone wants the ball. Uh, everyone wants to play. But they're so stripped of their top, their best players, the more experienced players, that it's been almost mission impossible I just want to ask you finally, uh, there was some nonsense uh, leaked about uh, a motivational video uh, and team talk that Stephen gave before the England match. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know what was the content, but there was a leak. It was designed to hurt Stephen. Um, nothing has come of it. The FAI investigated it and it's all over. Um, I just wonder uh, why anyone would be trying to get Stephen at this stage um, in the in the game. Uh, did you see anything, or have you heard anything, that would cause you concern? Um, no, I don't. Well, you, as you said, um, that we were talking during the week, you'd have to be there to know what happened. Yes. Uh, from what we, what, what we were told, it was an inspirational speech uh, to G the lads up going out against England yeah. at Wembley yeah. and refer to 1916 or the famine. Or the, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it, it, not a hanging offence anyway, John. No, I, I don't. I, 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 I don't see, uh, as, as, as an ex-player of that, I, mean, I don't see the advantage of it. Let's put, I wasn't there to see exactly no. what it was. Yeah. But uh, if it was an inspirational speech... Then all managers have it do, do it their own way. But it, but if, it, if it's in the context of the history of England yeah. versus Ireland and over the years, then I, I would mean your toolkit. I as someone who sat there and listened to your inspirational team talk, I can vouch for the fact that you weren't somebody uh, to try and lift the emotions and get people foaming at the mouth before they left the dressing no. room. No, I left that to the players. I think the players themselves, I mean, now I'm only, it's only my take on it. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing an international team and you're going out to play, yeah. you don't need to be inspirational speeches. Amy. Right, okay. Just as well in your case, because we didn't get them. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, it's great okay. to talk to you. Um, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. That's the great John Giles. And uh, he'll be watching. He won't be watching Burnley and Crystal Palace tonight. At half five, will you, John? Uh, but uh, you might watch Wolves afterwards playing Southampton, which would be a very yeah. good game. It's great yeah. of John to join us. We're grateful to John, of course.